Hey everyone, Zion here. Welcome to my channel. I'm happy that you're here today. Uh, and we're going to jump right into the topic. Today we're doing part three of the marriage series as per popular demand. So here we go. Now, the first one we spoke about, should we pray for marriage? The second one we spoke about, does God show signs? Can we ask God signs? That was the second part. Now, the third part is, okay, how do we know he is the one? Because those are recurring questions that come so often that it'd be good to cover them. And now we're going to move from the story from Genesis 24. And we're going to talk about ex Esther because I really like the story in there. I'm going to give you a summary of the story and then we're going to touch the examples right after that. But before that, I just want to remind everybody that there are things that are more important than marriage. We have the end of time. Salvation is important. So marriage is just one tool to help you accomplish what you've been called for in this earth. But after marriage, there's salvation. There's a place where we need to go. So I would love that people put as much energy into their salvation than they do into worrying about marriage. That's what I wanted to, to get out of the way. Now, the story about Esther. Esther was an orphan and she was with her uncle and then something happened in the kingdom. The queen... Uh, in that season, her name Vashti, uh, she did something. She disrespected the king. So if you read the story, you will see that there was a, a pride issue that happened and she lost her position because she publicly disrespected the king. Now, that's when Esther comes into play because there was a competition. Like, yeah. We can call it a competition and a lot of young girls were uh, called to see who was going to be picked to be the wife of the king, the new wife of the king, because Queen Vashti, she lost her position. She, she lost it. Now Esther comes, she's beautiful, she's young, and then she's picked among the many girls and you can see in that particular story that she also had favor. She was not necessarily part of the richest families and she, was, she didn't have a rich background, none of that. She just happened to be the daughter of one of the king's counselors. Now, something happened and the people of Esther, they were threatened of destruction. And Esther was the only one that was close enough to the king to speak to the king. But there are also laws in that kingdom that you can't just appear before the king without being called or be, without being given the permission. We all understand that every kingdom, every there's a constitution, every country has their constitution, their laws to be respected and they just have to be respected. Otherwise, you pay the consequences. And that's why Queen Vashti was disrespectful and she lost her position as a queen. Esther had to take the risk of going into the presence of the king without being called. And she was risking her life. So before she went, she fasted. She fasted and she asked her people, her family to fast with her so that she can get into the presence of the king. And the day came and she walked into the presence of the king. Now, pay attention to what happens in that story because we'll see the response of the king and that's what I want to draw your attention to. The king asked Esther, what is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be given to you. Imagine a king that was very frustrated, that had a bad history of relationship and he just did not want to know anything about anyone. He didn't even want to 
get a replacement for Queen Vashti initially. So now he has a wife and now she also kind of disrespect the laws, disrespects him and shows up. But the difference between both is one was prideful and one, one was humble. She never went alone. She went back to buy her prayers by her fasting, by her people backing her up and by God, the God of Israel. Now she gets in there and the king asks her, what is it that you want? Even if it is half of my kingdom, it shall be given to you. We can see that he wasn't afraid of losing his kingdom, half of it. He was willing to give it generosity. That's a sign. That's a qualification you need to be looking for. He wasn't afraid of competition. So he's, he was really secure, secure man. He was not afraid to provide for her. He's like, whatever you want, I will give it to you. Now, he was not afraid to listen. He was caring. He waited and he wanted to know what was her issue, what she needed, even if she actually broke the law to come into his presence. He was not afraid to sacrifice Whatever he had, he was like a father. He was willing to protect her. Once he heard what the issue was, he was willing to protect her and her people. He could have killed her there and then, but he didn't. He had compassion. So you can see a compassionate man, uh, a generous man, a protector, uh, a very secure man. He's not afraid of competition. He knows who he is, identity. All of those beautiful, beautiful things, we find it in this story. And that's why I love reading the Bible stories because when you take time and you read verse by verse, you will just uncover the most beautiful secrets and the most beautiful knowledge. And this is what I wanted to share, how to determine he is the one. Find those qualities, those qualities. The king was very comfortable with his identity, with his manhood, with his, uh, he was secure, even, even if he had a past. He was never too concerned about his needs. What's in for me? What do you bring to the table? None of that. He already knew what she was bringing to the table. He actually knew Esther. He picked her. He found that she was beautiful, but she was smart and she was humble. All of that. So we see on both sides, what are the qualities that are supposed to be sought after in a partner? That's all I wanted to share. I hope this blesses someone. Please don't forget to leave comments, questions, and I'll be glad to answer them. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care.